The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to worship on this Lord's Day, the first Sunday after Christmas. I want to say a special word of welcome to our brothers and sisters at Westminster Presbyterian Church, our sister church uh, here in this part of Worcester. Uh, we have a long-standing tradition of sharing services on certain special days, and the first Sunday after Christmas is one of those days. Uh, Westminster, as a congregation in the midst of the pandemic, like all of us are, had the great joy this past year to welcome uh, their new pastor, Enika. And I look forward very much to getting to know Enika better and also for us collaborating uh, between our congregations on worship and mission and ministry and whatever else uh, God sets before us to do. So uh, welcome today, welcome Enika, and wish you all the best. Well, we are counting down the days until the end of 2020. And I've seen uh, and read so many comments, commentary on how awful, awful, awful 2020 has been in many different ways. And it does not look like the advent of the new year is going to bring us much relief, especially here in the United States as the pandemic rages on. So I do, I guess my word, uh, in addition to welcome this morning, is continue to be safe, to be well, to keep that distance, wear that mask. Uh, let us not, as a community of faith, uh, gathered wherever we are this morning, uh, as we head into the new year, let us not uh, let down our guard. And um, may you all be well. Let us now prepare our hearts to worship God. Good morning and Merry Christmas. For this first Sunday of Christmas, we have two Noels from French composers of the 19th and early 20th century. First of all, Henri Moulet, from a set of his uh, sketches called Byzantine Sketches, a group of 10 pieces that are based on experiences and parts of the building of Sacre Coeur, the Basilica on Montmartre in Paris. In fact, Moulet's father uh, was actually a choir master at that church for many years. And this set of 10 pieces reflects his, uh, Moulet's impressions um, from all the time he spent within that church. So the Noel is, of course, from the Christmas season. The concluding piece for the postlude is by Alexander Guillemont, who was one of Moulet's teachers, coincidentally, and also a teacher of a great uh, many organists of the 20th century, the most famous of which was probably Marcel Dupre. This piece is a Noel setting of the Chant du Roy René, uh, a song attributed to King René of Anjou, and you will hear his tune throughout the piece. Um, our special music today is by Cameron Emmiston. I've mentioned before that we have uh, an embarrassment of riches here when it comes to pianists, and certainly none greater than Cameron. Uh, Cameron grew up in this church, and he currently attends Shenandoah University. It's a great pleasure to have him back sharing his talents with us today. Thank you.
Here on the heels of Christmas, we speak of love. We speak of joy. We speak of candlelight and fireside. We speak of dreams being fulfilled. We speak of glorias and angel choruses. We speak the words, do not be afraid. Here on the heels of Christmas, we are called to speak, for the world needs a light. A light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. Let us worship and listen, then let us speak. Amen. Please pray with us our prayer of confession. Where have we seen God these past days of Advent and Christmas tide? Seeing God in our midst is one thing. Speaking it out loud for all to hear, that's entirely different. The world needs the good news that God is found in things great and small, significant and ordinary, found in all manner of people and works of creation. We are not called to be silent. Family of God, let us join our voices in praying for the spirit and imagination and courage to speak of God's unending presence. God of today and tomorrow, we know that your fingerprints are all over this world. And we know that those who dream cannot keep silent. So today we pray, give us eyes to see you, give us courage to trust you, and give us lips to speak of you in our midst. Gratefully we pray, amen. Please turn to others around you and offer a gesture of peace. The peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Here at First Presbyterian Church Worcester, during this entire season of Advent, we have been using liturgy from the wonderful uh, web source called A Sanctified Art. And I would recommend uh, anyone going on that website and reading some of the wonderful pieces that are there in addition to liturgy for worship. The season theme that a sanctified art has chosen is entitled Those Who Dream. And so one, yet once again, for this first Sunday after Christmas, we are back in that liturgy. And this is an af affirmation of faith that comes from a sanctified art. And it plays on the theme of story. We are tellers of a wonderful story. So I invite you now to join with me in an affirmation of faith. We believe in telling the story, the story of a loving and merciful God who will not let God's people go, the story of a baby who grew up and changed the world, the story of our faith. We believe in speaking up for our neighbors, for the oppressed, for the overlooked and marginalized. We believe in speaking out against violence, greed, abuse, fear, scarcity mindset, and bigotry. We believe in passing the mic so that we are not the only ones speaking, so that we can lift up the voices of those around us, so that we too might listen and learn. We believe in the good news of the gospel. We believe that this good news is too good to keep to ourselves. We believe that those who dream cannot keep silent. Speak to us, holy God. Speak through us, holy God. May it be so. Amen. 
The psalm for this first Sunday after Christmas is Psalm 148. And if you remember, Psalm 148 is the highest peon of praise I think one could find in the book of Psalms. And so let us hear. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise the Lord in the heights. Praise God, all his angels. Praise him, all his host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for the Lord commanded, and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you deep sea monsters, and all that is in the deeps. Fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind, fulfilling his command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above the earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people, praise for all his faithful. For the people of Israel who are close to him, praise the Lord. I don't know whether it um, is particularly true for me because we have been journeying through Advent in the midst of this pandemic, a pandemic that has grown deeper and more dangerous as we have entered the cold weather. But as we've gone Sunday to Sunday, I have been really struck by stories, the stories. We talk about the Christmas story, but each of the readings of Advent are little stories in themselves that are woven together in a larger narrative. And so I thought, um, rather than a conventional sermon for this first Sunday after Christmas, that I would share a story. This story is entitled Papa Panov's Special Christmas. It was translated into the English by Leo Tolstoy, and the original story was written, by, written in French by Rubin Seyenne, and it demonstrates the virtues of kindness and compassion. It's based on a verse from the Bible, Matthew 25, 35. And I thought, especially since First Presbyterian is a Matthew 25 church, a, an effort, ministry and mission effort for equality uh, and, in, and radical inclusion that is a new thing for the Presbyterian Church USA. Since we are a Matthew 25 church, I thought, this story, Papa Panov's Special Christmas, is especially apt. It was Christmas Eve, and although it was still afternoon, lights had begun to appear in the shops and houses of the little Russian village. For the short winter day was nearly over. Excited children scurried indoors, and now only muffled sounds of chatter and laughter escaped from closed shutters. Old Papa Panov, the village shoemaker, stepped outside his shop to take one last look around. The sounds of happiness, the bright lights, and the faint but delicious smells of Christmas cooking reminded him of past Christmas times when his wife had still been alive and his own children little. Now they had gone. His usually cheerful face, 
with the little laughter wrinkles behind the round steel spectacles, looked sad now. But he went back indoors with a firm step, put up the shutters and set a pot of coffee to heat on the charcoal stove. Then, with a sigh, he settled into his big armchair. Papa Panov did not often read, but tonight he pulled down the big old family Bible and, slowly tracing the lines with one forefinger, he read again the Christmas story. He read how Mary and Joseph, tired by their journey to Bethlehem, found no room for them in the inn, so that Mary's little baby was born in a cowshed. Oh dear, oh dear, exclaimed Papa Panov. If only they had come here, I would have given them my bed and I could have covered the baby with my patchwork quilt to keep him warm. He read on about the wise men who had come to see the baby Jesus, bringing him splendid gifts. Papa Panov's face fell. I have no gift that I could give him, he thought sadly. Then his face brightened. He put down the Bible, got up and stretched his long arms to the shelf high up in his little room. He took down a small, dusty box and opened it. Inside it was a perfect pair of tiny leather shoes. Papa Panov smiled with satisfaction. Yes, they were as good as he had remembered, the best shoes he had ever made. I should give him those, he decided, as he gently put them away and sat down again. He was feeling tired now, and the further he read, the sleepier he became. The print began to dance before his eyes so that he closed them just for a minute. In no time at all, Papa Panov was asleep. And as he slept, he dreamed. He dreamed that someone was in his room, and he knew at once, as one does in dreams, who the person was. It was Jesus. You have been wishing that you could see me, Papa Panov, he said kindly. Then look for me tomorrow. It will be Christmas Day, and I will visit you. But look carefully, for I shall not tell you who I am. When at last Papa Panov awoke, the bells were ringing out, and a thin light was filtering through the shutters. Bless my soul, said Papa Panov, it's Christmas Day. He stood up and stretched himself, for he was rather stiff. Then his face filled with happiness as he remembered his dream. This would be a very special Christmas after all, for Jesus was coming to visit him. How would he look? Would he be a little baby, as at that first Christmas? Would he be a grown man, a carpenter, or the great king that he is, God's son? He must watch carefully the whole day through so that he recognized him however he came. Papa Panov put on a special pot of coffee for his Christmas breakfast, took down the shutters, and looked out the window. The street was deserted. No one was stirring yet. No one except the road sweeper. He looked as miserable and as dirty as ever. And well he might. Whoever wanted to work on Christmas Day and in the raw cold and bitter freezing mist of such a morning. Papa Panov opened the shop door letting in a thin stream of cold air. Come in, 
he shouted across the street cheerily. Come in and have some hot coffee to keep out the cold. The sweeper looked up, scarcely able to believe his ears. He was only too glad to put down his broom and come into the warm room. His old clothes steamed gently in the heat of the stove, and he clasped both red hands round the comforting warm mug as he drank. Papa Panov watched him with satisfaction, but every now and then his eyes strayed to the window. It would never do to miss his special visitor. Expecting someone? The sweeper asked at last. So Papa Panov told him about his dream. Well, I hope he comes, the sweeper said. You've given me a bit of Christmas cheer I never expected to have. I'd say you deserve to have your dream come true. And he actually smiled. When he had gone, Papa Panov put on cabbage soup for his dinner, then went to the door again, scanning the street. He saw no one, but he was mistaken. Someone was coming. The girl walked so slowly and quietly, hugging the walls of shops and houses, that it was a while before he noticed her. She looked very tired, and she was carrying something. As she drew nearer, he could see that it was a baby, wrapped in a thin shawl. There was such sadness in her face and in the pinched little face of the baby that Papa Panov's heart went out to them. Won't you come in, he called, stepping outside to meet them. You both need a warm seat by the fire and rest. The young mother let him shepherd her indoors and to the comfort of the armchair. She gave a big sigh of relief. I'll warm some milk for the baby, Papa Panov said. I've had children of my own. I can feed her for you. He took the milk from the stove and carefully fed the baby from a spoon, warming her tiny feet by the stove at the same time. She needs shoes, the cobbler said. But the girl replied, I can't afford shoes. I've got no husband to bring home money. I'm on my way to the next village to get work. A sudden thought flashed through Papa Panov's mind. He remembered the little shoes he had looked at last night. But he had been keeping those for Jesus. He looked again at the cold little feet and made up his mind. Try these on her, he said, handing the baby and the shoes to the mother. The beautiful little shoes were a perfect fit. The girl smiled happily, and the baby gurgled with pleasure. You have been so kind to us, the girl said, when she got up with her baby to go. May all your Christmas wishes come true. But Papa Panov was beginning to wonder if his very special Christmas wish would come true. Perhaps he had missed his visitor. He looked anxiously up and down the street. There were plenty of people about, but they were all faces that he recognized. There were neighbors going to call on their families. They nodded and smiled and wished him happy Christmas, or beggars. And Papa Panov hur hurried indoors to fetch them hot soup and a generous hunk of bread, hurrying out again in case he missed the important stranger. All too soon, the winter dusk fell. When Papa Panov next went to the door and strained his eyes, 
he could no longer make out the passers-by. Most were home and indoors anyway. He walked slowly back into his room at last, put up the shutters, and sat down wearily in his armchair. So it had been just a dream, after all. Jesus had not come. Then all at once, he knew he was no longer alone in the room. This was not a dream, for he was wide awake. At first, he seemed to see before him, see before his eyes, the long stream of people who had come to him that day. He saw again the old road sweeper, the young mother and her baby, and the beggars he had fed. As they passed, each whispered, Didn't you see me, Papa Panov? Who are you? He called out, bewildered. Then another voice answered him. It was the voice from his dream. It was the voice of Jesus. I was hungry, and you fed me, he said. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was cold, and you warmed me. I came to you today in every one of those you helped and welcomed. Then all was quiet and still. Only the sound of the big clock ticking, a great peace and happiness seemed to fill the room, overflowing Papa Panov's heart until he wanted to burst out singing and laughing and dancing with joy. So he did come, after all was all that he could say. Amen. Love has come, a light in the darkness. Love shines forth in the earth. Sands of time are running out on year 2020. And I don't know that there is much more to be said. We as a corporate people have endured much. We have had many losses in many different ways. We have hope that 2021 will bring vaccines eventually to all of us, that our loved ones will continue to be well. 
And we have the hope that in the words of the hymn we just sang, that love has come, a light in the darkness. And we sing that and we remember that right in the darkest days of the calendar year. I do hope as well that we can remember old Papa Panov, that we can look for the one who is coming in the faces of all those we meet, that we may reach out, reach out especially when we can be back together Look for those who are needing help. Look for those who are hurting. Find a word of comfort. Be a compassionate presence. That is all of our hopes for this year. Love, a light in the darkness. As you leave your place of worship this day, go knowing that you are embraced in the steadfast love of God forever, that you are redeemed in the grace of Jesus Christ now and always, and that together we are being empowered by Holy Spirit for faithful witness and loving service this and every day of our lives. As the new year dawns, may hope Peace, joy, and love remain with you. Amen.